Hi, my name is Anthony Martini, and I'm going to show you how to do a cross-site request forgery on OWASP's WebGoat. WebGoat is a purposely vulnerable web app that is used for training and testing purposes, so feel free to hack away once you get it up and running. It is best if you host it in a virtual environment if you choose to remain connected to the internet. And for brevity, we have downloaded and changed the appropriate permissions of our copy of WebGoat, and we'll be hosting it safely in Kali Linux. This is a convenient and easily available operating system that has many useful tools pre-installed. What we will be doing to exploit this vulnerability for our mail application is using the innate functionality of the web browser to blindly make GET requests for an image tag. However, when we trick the browser into calling an action in lieu of an image, we will have successfully demonstrated our attack. Cross-site request forgery is an attack that tricks the browser into loading a page that contains elements that will perform actions while the user is authenticated to a website. So to complete this lesson, we need to embed HTML code into a message box that contains an image tag starting a transaction on the web server. Our goal is to send an email to a news group that contains an image whose URL is pointing to a malicious request. The trick here is to include a one by one pixel image that contains a URL that points to the CRF lesson with a particular parameter, transfer funds equals 4,000. You can copy the shortcut from the left-hand menu by right-clicking on the left-hand menu and choosing copy shortcut. Whoever receives this email and happens to be authenticated at the time will have his funds transferred. When, you, when the victim's browser attempts to render the page, it will issue a request with a transfer funds action in the specified parameters. The request will include any cookies associated with the site. Therefore, if the user has authenticated and has either a permanent or even a current session cookie, the site will have no way to distinguish this from a legitimate user request. In this way, the attacker can make a victim perform actions they didn't intend to, such as log out, purchase an item, and any other function provided by the vulnerable website. When you think the attack is successful, refresh the page and you will find the green check on the left hand side menu. That's pretty much how WebGo works. And what we're working on right now is actually setting up a web proxy. Um, I'm actually going to use Burp just because it's pretty comfortable for me right now. And we're going to go through the demonstration on how to look at our HTTP headers. And if you're familiar at all with web proxies, we're going to turn the intercept mode on and we're going to select the port that we want our browser to point to, which is 8081. That was arbitrary. So we're going to reload the page and then look at the traffic that Burp has intercepted and we're going to see the get request for the normal web page. So we're not interested in that. Okay, so now what we have is the get request from the image tag that we loaded, and that contains the transfer funds URL. This second lesson will demonstrate a more sophisticated method on how to perform cross-site request forgery attacks containing multiple requests to bypass an additional security measure, such as the user prompt confirmation. A key factor that limits CSRF is that it's like a booby trap for people who have their banking application open while checking this email. The attacker cannot see what the user is doing in real time. This lesson shows how to execute the attack with an iframe. So look at the source of the page to see what parameters the confirmation requires. We'll find the confirm value in the prompt screen for our application. In addition to using the transfer funds method with a dollar amount, we will add the confirm value to the form in the confirmation page to successfully complete this attack. Start by crafting a set of image or iframe tags for our injection, one that references the other upon loading. Make the onload attribute of the first frame set the source of the second iframe. It is obvious that if we were to change the size of the frames here to something not visible to the human eye, that the user would completely overlook the small pixels. One method that we have seen to mitigate this attack is through the use of a CAPTCHA, a completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. One of the longest acronyms ever, a CAPTCHA form, can be used to authenticate that the user is a person.
The first frame shows the user prompt, the result of the first forged request to transfer funds. Next, the results of the second forged request, the confirmation, are shown, indicating that $400 were successfully transferred. Refreshing the page will indicate that this lesson has been completed.